All right, thanks for that, Kate. Um, when asked to do this webinar for warm weather worries, um, I should explain, as a large animal vet, our workload is very much seasonal. So thinking about topics that come up for this time of year, um, I've come up with the three Fs for summer, which are fly strike, foot rot, and facial eczema. Now, there's a lot of other topics that I could have picked, um, but these three are probably quite close to the heart because they're significant animal welfare issues. And um, the top two are pretty much nationwide, whereas the third one is uh, more on the North Island. Facial eczema has already been discussed last month, so I just wanted to give a summary um, to end this presentation with, but I'm mainly going to focus on fly strike and foot rot in this session and, um, and then take it from there. So I'll start with fly strike. The, one of the reasons that I wanted to discuss this is because it's quite widespread and it causes a lot of severe problems um, in, in several different species, not just in sheep, although that's what we most commonly um, see it in. So what happens is blow flies will, will search for moist, warm spots on an animal and they will lay their eggs there and once they hatch, maggots will come out and start eating away at the flesh of an animal, which naturally is very, very uncomfortable and um, what also happens at the same time is that they actually release ammonia into the system of that particular animal. So if there's a lot of maggots, they will do a lot of damage but also cause ammonia poisoning at the same time, which is something that is probably not um, a common knowledge is as, um, as the main damage has been. Now, um, as, as mentioned before, it doesn't just happen in sheep. I have come across it in my years as a vet in goats, in dogs, cats, cows, um, sheep naturally, and um, mainly it can happen in animals that have got wounds, which are quite nice, moist and warm. Uh, foot rot is one of the main uh, other reasons, which I will discuss after fly strike, and diarrhea is a main cause for fly strike as well. Now the symptoms, it will start with, with animals being a little bit fidgety, being a bit itchy. Some of them might um, you know, reach over a lot or be a little bit um, at the edge of your paddocks, sometimes searching for a bit of shelter. And um, if it continues for long or if they've got a particularly high number of maggots, then they will get quite lethargic, they'll stop eating, they'll go down, um, lose weight, which can be a little bit tricky to see, especially if you've got animals with lots of, of wool, for example, obviously sheep or um, angora goats. Also, if you've got a lot of them, then it might be harder to actually judge what's happening to an individual. So. Down animals will be quite obvious because after a while they can't get up again um, because their their energy is drained by all these megas that are, they're eating away um, their tissue. Diarrhea is mentioned as a symptom but it's also a cause and that's the main reason. You will notice it as a symptom but mainly it's a cause because the um, flies are attracted to the diarrhea and they will um, obviously then start to lay their eggs which will cause additional problems to the diarrhea. I've put death as a final symptom because, as I mentioned before, ammonia poisoning is actually quite um, a main problem with maggots. And um, if they've got a high load of them, then they will actually die from that. Um, not only from ammonia poisoning, though, also if they've been down for a while, they obviously can't eat enough. Um, and depending on um, other circumstances, they might actually um, die from that. So this is a picture on a sheep. It's very hard to get a proper photo of fly strike. Well, I haven't yet because, you know, normally you just focus on treating an animal. You're not going to just take a photo before you do anything else. But you can see some, some big, significantly red spots around that tail. Now, the tail is quite dirty. The whole area of the backside is dirty. And if you clip this area, carefully, mind you, because it's going to be very sore, you will find that there will be a lot of areas where um, some tissue has been eating away, it might be bleeding a little bit, but it will be very, very raw, um, red and swollen um, and very sore. I've had several sheep of my own um, with with that that were very woolly and um, yeah, it was quite a, quite a shock to see how quickly something like this happens. So the treatment is you need to clip them up, remove any wool around there and clean it up. Now I often just use warm water or sometimes with a little bit of iodine in it but not too much iodine because it can be quite aggressive on those open wounds and it makes it even worse. However, the good part about iodine is that it's an actual antiseptic and, um, and help to, to combat that infection. There is antibiotic spray available but there's also fly strike powder available which is quite good with the wounds because it will cover it and protect it but also it 
um, act as an insecticide, so it will keep more flies away and uh, promote that healing process. If it gets quite bad or there's extended sections of wounds, then antibiotic injection um, can be necessary. If you haven't got this on hand on your property, then you might need to ask a vet. Um, most of the time, if you come in and you have a chat to a vet, then they're happy to just dispense it to you to treat um, your animal yourself. However, I would recommend if you've got a number of animals affected or if you've got quite severe um, disease, so animals that are down and quite lethargic, that it would be beneficial um, for them and for you to get a vet out to see them because they might need some additional treatment um, like pain relief and um, a boost with, with energy and, um, and, and, and vitamins. Prevention is, is quite important with fly strike, so there's a number of options there. One thing that happens a lot with people that have a lot of sheep is, is crutching. So that mainly means that you take away the wool around the backside area because this is the main area where you find fly strike. Um, and that will expose that and make it more easy to see, but also um, it, it will provide flies with less moist, warm spots. Another treatment that's available is dipping, so that means that you treat your um, animals with a product, um, either Cyrex, Mego, there's, there's a lot of different products available, um, and basically what you do is you cover them with this product and it will act as an insecticide and keep those flies away for 8 to 10 weeks. Um, normally this is recommended to do after you've shorn them, um, so that they can actually, um, obviously, well, it work a little bit better once once the wool is gone. Um, another thing is always remove dags if there are any dags because dags can um, was basically a clump clump of dirt that can get stuck to the wool and can cause a nice area um, where flies can lay their eggs. Another prevention is wound treatment, which is quite important in all sorts of animals, not just to prevent fly strike. Um, but yeah, that's a whole other topic. But basically, drenching your animals and have a good and some into programs set up for them will help um, prevent a diarrhea, which is one of the main causes for fly strike. Um, so yeah, this is um, this is pretty much. It. If, if you wanted to have more information on the different treatments available, then it's probably best to um, to get in touch with your vet and um, and go from there. Um, next slide, Kate. We'll get on to the next topic, which is foot rot. So foot rot. Um, well, the, the the name speaks for itself, really. It means that it's an infection that rots away the tissue between the claws. So this happens in animals that have got two claws per foot. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking mainly of uh, cattle, sheep, goats, alpacas, deer. You see it in pigs as well, but they seem to be a little bit more resilient than other animals. Um, what happens is, especially in times where you've got prolonged rainfall, the, the soil gets quite wet and animals, their feet will get quite soft. Um, the skin will then be um, quite quite soft and open to infection, so infection can happen after an initial lesion has um, found its way through the skin, and that often happens either through wear and tear, so if they're on hard ground for an extended period of time, that skin will wear, and when it's quite soft, it's, it's easier to rip, um, or also if you've got sharp stones or other um, material which is on the surface that they can stand on that can actually cause puncture and um, cause a lesion in the skin as well. Once that initial lesion is there, it's very easy for those bacteria to get in and cause foot rot. And, um, and this can actually happen quite quickly. So the symptoms for foot rot, my mum always used to say, um, there are five signs of infection. Now she would always use the Latin names because she was a nurse. Um, and for me, that was quite good because during my study, Latin is quite important in my study as well, but I didn't really want to, to go there with you, so I've translated those into English. So these are the five signs of infection. It starts with swelling, and um, this, this can sometimes be a bit hard to see because you need to get quite up close unless it gets really bad, but generally when it's between the claws, it's quite confined to a certain area. But once you put your, your hand on it, you will notice that it feels almost like um, it's a bit bouncy because there's a bit of fluid under that skin, that's um, the swelling that we're, we're looking for in the infection. So the redness, it's, um, as you saw in that photo we had before with the sheep as fly strike, the skin gets quite red when it's infected. Heat will occur 
accompany this redness as well. If you, I don't know if you know the normal temperature of, of a foot or any um, limb on any animal, but if you've got um, a perfectly healthy animal, it's quite good to familiarise yourself with um, those suits of things. So, for example, body temperature, uh, heart rate, respiratory rate, so that you can recognise when something is not right. So one of those things is normal skin temperature, you know, because if you put, put your hand on an infected part, it will be really quite hot, heat, uh, hot and radiate heat. Sometimes it's even, you know, like you, you feel the bonnet of a car is ready to cook eggs on it, sometimes can be as bad as that. Pain is another part of um, and sign of infection. Um, which which become, becomes quite obvious when you try and, and touch it or obviously when an animal with foot is limping and this brings me to the fifth sign of infection which is loss of function. Now depending on which particular organ or uh, part of the body we're talking about, a loss of function is, is different but in the case of limbs and uh, feet in particular here, that means that they try and take the weight off that foot. Um, so basically they'll either start limping if there's their feet in the air or they, they'll start um, putting their head up whether it's a front foot or their head down when it's a back foot and they're trying to put weight on that. So these are things as well that are good to familiarise yourself what is normal behaviour for my particular animal. So these are two pictures of foot rod. This is in cattle but um, it's pretty similar for any species. The one on the left you can see the swelling has actually caused distension between those two claws, so they've actually come apart a little bit because the foot is so swollen, you can see it's quite red. And there's some yellow tissue which is granulation tissue, which means that it's starting to heal up, but there's still quite a lot of significant active infection in there and also a bit of blood as you can see. The, the photo on the right um, is taken from the back of the foot and you can see how hard it actually extends past that point of um, the skin between the two claws. So you can see it's quite red and swollen still at the top. And I'll tell you that if you put your hand on there, that will be really quite hot to the touch as well. So treatment can be different depending on which species you're looking at. So I've often found in sheep and goats that I've treated, and the same would go for deer, um, there's if it's not too bad, you can um, to get away with cleaning the lesion. So once again, with some warm water and iodine. And it's always quite important to make sure that there's not anything stuck between those two claws, because sometimes little stones, about especially of about a centimeter, can get stuck between those claws. So it's important to make sure that there's nothing still there. And then you can spray it with antibacterial spray, which is purple or blue spray, which is it's, um, easily available from your vet without any prescription. Um, but it works to treat in sheep or goats. However, if they're really quite lame on it or if they've got multiple feet affected um, in a bad way then um, an, an antibiotic injection might be beneficial. In cattle however I've always found that they need an antibiotic injection um, on top of the cleaning of the lesion because it gets quite bad quite quickly and spray doesn't seem to, to, do, um, to do a good job. These are photos that a colleague of mine Ashley has taken. So she's um, examining a sheep here. Now then a good way of examining a sheep for anything that you're doing is actually putting it on its bum. And once you've got it against you on its bum, it can't actually go anywhere because the weight of her in or his intestines will actually keep her nicely seated there. And this is why it's also not too uncomfortable as long as you don't um, leave him or her there for too long a time. So it's very easy to see all the feet in this case. So once again, run your fingers in between those claws and, um, and then tr clean them, treat them and, and even trim them if you need to. Um, I don't really want to go into that today because it will be too much um, talk to her to do the trimming as well, but that's a good way to get used to, to looking at your sheep. So finally, but um, yeah, but not least, facial eczema, just a, a summary again after last month. On the North Island, mainly because of the temperatures, you need a soil temperature of 12 degrees or over for three consecutive days for that fungus to start growing. Now, that fungus will release spores, and these spores will get ingested by any animal eating the particular grass. Now, once they've ingested those spores, toxins will be formed, and those toxins um, do a lot of damage to the liver. The liver is um, very important in detoxifying our blood. You know, anything we eat, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything bad, will actually cause products that our body doesn't need, and the liver normally takes care of those. However, if the liver is damaged, it doesn't perform its function as well as it should, and then what happens is those toxins are actually um, free in the body to cause damage to our other internal organs um, with, with a lot of different um, results and, and disasters. So, uh, main 
main species affected are cattle, sheep, um, fellow deer and apacus goats as well, but not in, in such a way they seem to have a bit more resilience to facial action, we don't see it as often. Yeah, facial action has started um, as main lesions to the face, so it was quite swollen and red with actually skin peeling off, but nowadays we also see it all over the body. Um, and also of the other of, of any lactating animal, and it's, it's very, very sore and very painful. So what you see initially is some swelling, some redness, and then the hairs will start to fall off, and, um, and that will finally result in the skin peeling off. And because of the damage done to the liver, there will be a lot of happening inside an animal as well. So we've um, seen, especially last year, last year was was terrible in the, the white cattle with very high spore counts in the grass, on the grass that we um, monitored throughout um, throughout the season. But with very high spore counts, we saw that there was a lot of exposure of all our animals, and we actually had a lot of clients even losing animals because of um, facial eczema pro problems from um, from liver damage. Another thing to keep in mind is there is no cure for facial eczema. So once an animal is affected, the only thing you can do is try and make it as easy and painless as possible. So feed them on anything other than grass, so supplement feed if it doesn't have any spores in them, uh, pain relief if they need to, sometimes antibiotics if their immunity has lowered, and uh, creams on any affected area to help them and give them some relief. But prevention is definitely the number one that we recommend, um, which, which involves sink supplementation. There's different ways of doing it. Bowl is, is um, it's like a, a big pill that you have to put down the throat, but it does last for a lot longer than any of the other supplementations. Um, it will be up, well, four to, up to six weeks generally. Um, water treatment basically means it's zinc powder that will be added to the water, but it does have to be on a daily basis. And the problem is that um, if it rains, they might not get as much zinc as they need. Other ways to do it are putting supplement feed um, adding zinc to that, so if you give any meal or anything else um, okay. that will help. Pasture spraying and pasture management are also a couple of options, but uh, once again this is just going to be a summary, so I don't really want to go into that because my colleague Nick already discussed this last month. So just um, to finish off, these are a couple of pictures of facial eczema. As you can see, the one on the bottom on the left, the sheep, that's, that's pretty much um, why facial eczema was named as it was, because there's a lot of damage to the face, around the eyes, around the nose, and it's incredibly painful and, and um, a lot of discomfort. The calf um, on the right, you can see the, the whole skin is peeling off there, and it's mainly white areas um, that are affected, um, which it has to do with sun exposure. Um, and it's, well, yeah, it's just awareness disease, which is why I just did have to mention it this time. Uh, a couple more slides, I think. Kate, thank you. So, yeah, just to, to finish off, there's a lot of other things I could have talked about, like wound burdens and vaccinations, which are also quite specific per animal and basically all year round. So if you were interested, then um, maybe you could put a suggestion um, to Kate and we might see what we can do for next month and the month after. But always, if you have any questions um, or you're worried, just talk to your vet. Most vet clinics that I know do not charge for phone calls and we'd rather you come to us for the right advice. Um, because we hate to see animals suffering. So I've always found with my animals and with any clients I've looked after, if you look after your animals, they will look after you. So happy animals, happy you. Thanks for your attention.